I mean, I wouldn't be here talking to you about seasteading if there was not this great new organization, Mises Brazil, getting people together. Any kind of reform, even if it's the kind that I advocate, structural reform changes incentives, is going to happen because people go out there and spread the word, get a group of people together who agree about it, convince them, and then go do it. So organization is important. What I'm saying is most of the benefits of organizing into groups are not that those groups will somehow eventually take over the world, right? Most of the benefit of the Libertarian Party of Brazil is not that they will eventually conquer Brasilia. The benefit is by joining this group, you get to signal your beliefs, you get to ally with people who share your philosophy, you get to spend time debating with them and learning with them and from them and feeling not alone in the world. I mean, this is really important. This is really valuable. But most of the gains are private gains to that group of people and not that these groups will grow and grow and grow to the point where they take over the world. And, you know, this is not just a belief that I have. For example, David Nolan, who founded the Libertarian Party in the United States, says the same thing. He says that he views it more as a social group than as a, way, a political party that will eventually someday win in elections. All right, so that was the ideas, and now I'm going to zoom way, way, way down to the Seasteading Institute, the organization I founded, and our concrete projects to do this. All right, so here's what we've done. Uh, we were founded in 2008 with $500,000 of funding from PayPal founder Peter Thiel and first investor in Facebook. We got nonprofit status in the United States. This was actually uh, a little bit of a fight. For July 4th last year, our political blog, uh, Let a Thousand Nations Bloom, celebrated Secession Week because it's the anniversary of when the United States seceded from Britain in the American Revolution. We had a week of posts all about secession. This was the week the IRS looked at our website, <laughs> the tax authority in the US that grants tax exempt status, and, and they wrote us a letter that said, um, how is advocating illegal tax evasion and secession a charitable purpose? And uh, we, you know, politely explained that there was nothing illegal about advocating for peaceful secession, that we were, you know, linking to reputable publications like the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times where these issues are being discussed, and they, they, they ceded and uh, got us our status. One of the biggest challenges of floating cities, as you might imagine, is engineering, and that's where a lot of our work is. Uh, we've been working on kind of an overview of all of the engineering issues, trying to figure out what the challenges are and what designs are best. It's published on our website as a rough draft right now. We've done one detailed design for a 200-guest hotel resort size for the waves off Los Angeles. Uh, it's about $120 million or $300 a square foot. And we hope to bring this price down with future research. We did a design contest, which was kind of neat. We started with the, the, the skeleton that our engineers had designed and then let architects put whatever they could imagine on top. So it was sort of a fusion of practicality and aesthetics. This is the overall winner, the swimming city. Uh, this was the best picture, Oasis of the Seas. Uh, this won the Aesthetics Award. It was a self-sustained seasteading. And Brazil's own Anthony Ling won the Personality Award for rendering freedom. You'll note that this design has the best understanding of the ideas of seasteading. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but every apartment unit here is sort of a modular shipping container, and they're cranes, so that even if the seastead cities are the size of this platform, you could move your home from one to the other very easily. There's been a ton of press interest in what we're doing. In 2009, someone Googled for seasteading every 12 minutes. We throw conferences. Uh, last year, we, we had 19 speakers and 75 people, uh, not as many as Mises Brazil. We've got some competition. Um, People spoke about engineering designs, business models, international law of the sea, all kinds of things. Uh, all the videos are on our website. We've inspired people around the world. There's a seasteading startup in, in Florida 
trying to build a seastead for tourism. There's one in Singapore building fish farms. And I know of at least four theses that are being written already on seasteading academically. Uh, there's ocean engineering and legal theses in Spain. Uh, there's a master's in documentary at Stanford. And uh, for a master's in uh, film writing, someone's doing a pilot for a television series uh, based on seasteading uh, as science fiction. We recently held our first ever floating festival that we call Ephemeral in a river in California. Uh, unlike most of what we do in the office, this had the benefit of actually building stuff on the water, you know, fully engaging with the realities. This was uh, my beginning to the event. This was my home-built pirate raft uh, partway along the journey before I got bored and tried to climb up the side and capsized it, um, thus definitely engaging with the water. This was the main built half of the festival. There was also a large group of houseboats. And the idea of ephemeral is building a new country in international waters is really, really hard. Easier than winning in a democracy, but very hard. What if we can chop it down on every dimension? Less people, less time, less freedom. So the first year we did it on a river in California, and it's going to move out every year to more and more autonomous zones until eventually it's a temporary festival in international waters where people have legal autonomy. And then our hope is for it to happen more often throughout the year, to get longer and longer each year until eventually perhaps it's a permanent way of life. That's some of what we've done. What we're doing now, making a bigger and better ephemeral. There are a number of differences. The one I'm most excited about is that last year there was just one cluster, which is not really the idea of seasteading. This year, while we'll still be in California waters, we're going to have five to ten different independent islands, each of which has different rules about how loud your music can be, whether you can show corporate logos, whether guns are allowed, whether you can have alcohol, whether you're allowed to wear clothes or have to wear clothes. So it's going to be a much better realization of the ideas of seasteading, a bunch of different communities trying different things. I'm writing a book. This is actually a book I wrote about seven years ago. You can see it's really detailed, all kinds of little bits. Uh, I'm writing a new book for a wider audience this year. We're working on exploring business ideas. Uh, the first one is doing cosmetic surgery on cruise ships. The idea is people already fly to other countries for cheaper medical procedures. Uh, if you're an American, why fly to India or Thailand or Brazil when you could get on a cruise ship out of San Diego or Florida? And we're working on our kind of medium-term strategy for how to build the first real autonomous seastead uh, on the ocean by 2015 for 50 people. It's been kind of a struggle taking this, this big long-term vision and, and turning it into concrete steps. And, and we found that this kind of six-year goal is, is really important. It's kind of long enough that we think we can do something really meaningful, but yet short enough that we can make much more detailed plans, you know, Gantt charts, if you know what those are, as compared to the big goal of seasteading. Like any humans, our wants exceed our resources. So here are the kind of logical next steps that we'd like to do if we had the funding. Uh, do a location survey. People always ask us, where would you build a seastead? We have some ideas, but we need to hire an oceanographer and uh, political boundary researchers to study the best places in the world. Hire an engineer. And we have a number of contests that we'd like to run, like last year's design contest. So if you're interested in dreaming of a better world and trying to figure out how to make it, check out our websites. Seasteading.org is the main one. And our political blog, Let a Thousand Nations Bloom, is at a thousandnations.com. Thank you.